morning. It is brew day. Uh, today I'm going to be brewing a five gallon batch of a German alt beer. Now this is a recipe uh, I came up with uh, with my 10 year old son. Uh, he was very excited to sit at the computer with me and look at all the ingredients and uh, put them all together. So uh, I know he's excited for me to brew it and give it a try. So here we go. Um, this is going to be, um, as I said, it's going to be a nice amber German alt beer. Looking for an original gravity of 1048, uh, hoping for a final gravity of 1012, which would give us an alcohol by volume of about 4.8%. Um, going to be going for about 45 IBUs and looking for an SRM of about 15. Um, um, anticipating a brew house efficiency of about 73%. Uh, and for grains, we're going to be using six pounds of uh, Vienna malt, uh, one and a half pounds of Munich malt, uh, one pound of Pilsner malt, one pound of Crystal 40, and four ounces of chocolate malt for a little bit of color. Uh, for hops, um, I've got Centennial on hand, so I'm going to use an ounce of Centennial uh, for about 60 minutes for bittering. And I've also got uh, Willamette on hand, uh, and I'm going to use those in the flavoring uh, for about 10 minutes. Uh, I know they're not traditional German hop hops, but you know what, it's what I have and we're going to make do. And I feel like the Willamette hops will uh, give it... Uh, uh, similar characteristic to uh, some of the European hops, so I don't think it'll be too out of line. And for yeast, I'm going to be using uh, Safel's German Ale yeast, uh, K97. I've used that before, had uh, good luck with it, um, gonna keep doing it. Made a starter, it's upstairs, and uh, it uh, was going great. Uh, we're gonna mash this for about an hour and 15 minutes at 152 degrees. Uh, then I'm going to mash out at 168 degrees and then we're going to go for a 60 minute boil. All right, let's get to it. at it in the light it's you know that color for a german alt beer again is usually 11 to 17 srm this was designed to be about a little over 12 srm so it's on the lighter side for german alt beer and if i hold it up to the light you know it's got a nice golden amber color uh it's it didn't clarify as much as i was hoping i can just barely make out my fingers behind it um, I think part of that might be, um, I have a whole house filter in my basement for my water supply and not long after I brewed this, I noticed that the water tasted terrible, terrible. So, uh, I think I had reached break, breakthrough on a filter. Um, so I'm wondering if there's got some chlorine or other things in this batch. Um, but you know, the clarity isn't bad. It's just not as good as I was hoping. Um, certainly looks nice and is within the uh, style range. Um, can't see it now, you can see the lacing, but this had a nice head on top of it when I first uh, poured it from the tap. Uh, I do keg most of my beers, including this one. Uh, for aroma on this, I am really getting mostly malt characteristic. I'm not really getting, maybe getting a touch of a floral hop characteristic, but that could be my imagination. Uh, if I were to make this beer again, one change I would do is I might up the uh, amount of uh, flavor hops. In this case, that's Willamette. I might up that uh, by half an ounce to an ounce to see if that makes a difference. But I feel like the aroma is really dominated by a mild malt characteristic with a slight 
toasted malt uh, aroma in there. I mean, there's not much going on for the head on this, but it smells good. There's no, uh, certainly nothing that smells bad, which I'm grateful for. Mm. Might, might have a little bit of sweetness in that uh, in there too. All right, cheers. Mm. Well, I would definitely say that is a. I think we meet the definition for flavor with the, <laughs> with uh, where was it? Where did I read that? Let's see. I could have sworn I read somewhere about a rich malt characteristic, and that's exactly what I just tasted. Yep. I mean, I wouldn't say it's sweet. It's well balanced, but right up front, lots of bready malt flavors. It kind of goes from a white bread into a toasted bread uh, flavor, and the toasted bread flavor is kind of mild. It's not strong, so it's nice. It, it tastes complex. Nice bready malt flavors in this. Mm, it's actually very good. I think a lot of this flavor that's coming through is due to the Vienna malt that I used. Again, as far as percentages go, I made a five gallon batch. 62% of this is Vienna malt. Um, about 16% is Munich malt, maybe about 10% Pilsner, 10% uh, Crystal 40, and about 2% uh, chocolate malt. Those are, I was rounding. I'm not sure if that adds up exactly to 100%, but I'm rounding, looking at the numbers in Beersmith here. Um, as far as fitting the style guidelines go, I would say this is pretty close. I, um, one thing I'd have to say is I'm looking at the commercial examples they list and they're all German beers that I really don't have access to. So I'm going to have to, I'm basically just going off of what I've read and you know, under ingredients, it says that the base malt for this style is usually Pilsner malt, sometimes Munich. Well, in my opinion, there's a big difference between Pilsner malt and Munich malt, um, in terms of flavor, um, uh, big difference. Um, Vienna malt is a little bit darker than Pilsner malt. Like Pilsner malt is, gives you like two SRM. Vienna malt is 3.5 SRM. And your typical Munich malt is about nine SRM. Um, I used a light Munich malt in this and that's six SRM. Um, so Pilsner malt, again, Pilsner is usually about two SRM. Munich is nine SRM. Munich malt is usually much maltier compared to Pilsner malt. Um, so in terms of bready, malty characteristics, Pilsner, going from Pilsner to Munich, that's, I, I kind of interpret that as a wide, that's a wide variety there. And they do say that small amounts of crystal, chocolate, or black malts can be used for color, which is what I did. Uh, and it does say that occasionally wheat malt is used. Um, and again, they usually use, uh, kind of, uh, like a Zotz uh, type of, of hop, which I did not do in this case. Um, I will say, now based on the style guidelines, I think it came out pretty well. I think it meets the style guidelines. I think, again, uh, for my next version of this, I could use a little bit more flavor hops to get a little bit more, uh, hop characteristic, because I'm not really tasting much as far as hop goes. Uh, 
I mean, I did use four, uh, five different grains in this uh, beer, so I'm definitely getting the malt complexity. But the beer is basically, it's just a balanced malty beer. A complex malty beer that tastes good, but I'm not really getting any hop characteristic. I think I would, I want to up the hops for the next go around. Just to see if I can get a little bit of, I would like maybe like a little bit of a, a spicy hop finish to it. Because this is, this beer is clean. It finishes smooth. Um, but again, I'm not getting any hop characteristic and I'd like to see what would happen if I get a little. So for version two, I think I'm going to keep my grains as they are, but I'm going to go with a little bit more hops. So.